Welcome to our lesson about the ribbon bar in Inventor. I mentioned in my previous lesson that if you use AutoCAD 2009 or SolidWorks, any edition later than 2007, or even some of the Office programs of editions later than 2007, you'll be familiar with the ribbon bar concept. The ribbon bar is made up of tabs, panels, and individual tools. Here on the Design tab, I'm on the Frame panel. The Trim Extend tool is highlighted. Model, Inspect, Tools. As you can see, each tab contains a number of panels hosting a variety of related commands for a particular task. I've got the help callouts popping out down there. Let me go disable that in a minute. Here on the Tools tab, we can modify a number of application and document settings, make customizations with macros and the VBA editor, add modules, etc. It's a little easier than scrolling through the old drop-down menu structure. It's also easy to change the appearance and size of the ribbon. Just right-click anywhere on the ribbon and a contextual menu will pop up. Select Ribbon Appearance and let's try Text Off. As you can see, this compacts the view by removing icon text. Let's try it again. Right-click anywhere on the ribbon and try small. Again, further compacted. Let's try compact now. And even smaller, taking up less screen real estate. All right, let's restore to normal. Right click, ribbon appearance, normal. There's another option here. Let's take a look at that as well. Right click, ribbon appearance, reset ribbon. This takes you back to factory defaults. We need to confirm that we want to remove all our customizations. Let's click yes. And the ribbon is restored to factory defaults. A grouping of tools on each tab, as I mentioned, is called a panel. We can hide or show available panels from the same contextual menu. Right click, let's select panels. This is a list of available panels for this particular tab. The ones currently visible are marked with a check mark. To hide a panel, you simply scroll and unselect it from this list. As you see, the component tab is no longer visible on the assemble ribbon. Let's restore it. Right-click anywhere on the ribbon, Panels, and select Component. The component panel is now visible. If it's not convenient for you to have the ribbon positioned at the top of the screen like I've got it here, you'll be happy to know that it can be undocked so it floats on your monitor, or it can be docked in different locations around the graphic area. Let's right-click on the ribbon, select Docking Positions. Currently, we're docked at the top, which is indicated with a check mark. Let's try docking the ribbon on the left. Now let's take it to the right. Right-click anywhere on the ribbon. Docking positions, right. And here's how the ribbon looks docked on the right side of the graphic area. Let's try undocking the ribbon now. We simply right-click on the ribbon, select Undock Ribbon. Now the ribbon is a floating palette which I can reposition anywhere in the graphic area. Let's restore the ribbon to the top. Right-click in the title bar of the ribbon and select Dock to Top. And the ribbon bar is restored to our previous docking position. This arrow here toggles between different viewing positions for the ribbon. If you're not happy with how much screen real estate the ribbon takes up, you can click this little arrow to collapse it to panel tiles. Now the ribbon just displays the tabs and then the panel tiles for each tab. Mouse over the panels and the tools fly out. There is no pin down option here though. This customize arrow toggles to a third position. If we click it again, the ribbon will minimize to tabs, meaning that only the tabs are displayed. This gives you maximum screen real estate and when you left click on each tab, the panels and tools will appear. The Customize arrow has a third toggle position. If we click on it a third time, we'll show the full ribbon. Let me close this file. I can click on the X in the top corner of the graphic area, or I can click on the Inventor button, scroll down to Close, and I can choose whether to close the active file or all files. When you launch Inventor but don't have a file open, as you see here, your available tabs on the ribbon are Get Started, Tools, and Vault if you have this component installed. You may have some additional tabs depending on your version of Inventor. Let's take a look at the Get Started tab. It's full of helpful resources. What's New gives you an overview of the new features in if you're familiar with Inventor already but just want to get up to speed. Getting Started Guide from an online location. 
Next, we have tutorials, show me animations. This takes you through how to perform a number of task-based skills. Engineersrule.org, this is the online Autodesk students community. It's a great forum for questions and answers. Customer involvement, this refers to the customer involvement program, where your usage helps Autodesk identify trends that apparently help them improve their software. And you choose whether to participate anonymously or with your contact information. As you can see, the Get Started tab is packed with learning resources. Now let's take a look at the Tools tab. From here, we can access Application Options. This is where you make program-wide changes to your installation of Inventor. We've got General Changes, Save, File, Colors, Display, Hardware, Prompts, Drawing, etc. The tabs you'll probably be making the most changes to are the General, Sketch, and Content Center tabs. Let's take a look at the Vault tab now. The Vault is a client-side data management tool. Files are basically stored in a vault where users check them out to make edits. And of course, this helps prevent a big version mess if you've got a team working on a model. Vault is Autodesk's recommended utility for multi-user projects. By the way, if the size of your software window is small, your ribbon will be truncated, meaning that some of the commands will just be cut off. What you do is right-click and remove some of the panels that are visible. This will free up a little space on your ribbon. Let's open a file. We can use the Quick Access Toolbar. Let's open my base. Open. Once we open a file, additional tabs appear showing the various work environments that are available to us in Inventor. This downward facing arrowhead provides an additional flyout of tools. Click the thumb pin icon to pin down this expanded panel so that it stays visible when you mouse away from the panel. Click the pin again to unpin the flyout. When you mouse over a tool for a couple seconds, a short callout will appear describing the tool. If you hover over a bit longer, an expanded help flyout appears with some basic instructions and an example image. These help flyouts were getting in my way a bit earlier. For more help, you can also press F1. The local Autodesk Inventor help file for the tool that you're mousing over appears. Let's close the help file. As you can see, Inventor has got terrific internal learning support. As you get comfortable with the software, you'll want to customize your ribbon to maximize your productivity and efficiency. If there's a tool you use frequently, you can right-click on it in the ribbon and then select Add to Quick Access Toolbar. What that means is that whenever you're in the model environment, you'll see the whole tool available on the Quick Access Toolbar. Let's expand to go take a look. There's our new tool. To remove it, just right-click on the tool and then select Remove from Quick Access Toolbar. And the whole tool is removed. If there's some tools you don't use frequently and do want to free up some space on the panel, you can just add them to the extended panel. Right click, move to expanded panel. Then they'll only appear in the extended panel flyout. Okay, I think these tool tip callouts are again taking up too much space, so let's go hide them. Tools tab, options panel, application options. Let's go down to tooltip appearance on the general tab. We'll hide the second level tooltips and we'll delay the first level tooltips a little bit. Just increase the seconds to delay, and then apply and close. The tooltips are of course really handy if you're new to Inventor, but since I'm recording this video, they are taking up a bit of space. Let's go back to the Model tab. Now let's right click anywhere on the ribbon and select Customize User Commands. Here you can create your own panel of tools for each tab. And essentially, you're not limited to how they're grouped on the tabs and panels. Some commands won't be available for your active environment, so they'll be disabled or unavailable in the custom panel. In the left-hand column, we have an alphabetized list of available tools. We can filter out the tools using the Choose Commands From filter up above. Let's bring in a couple tools, select the tool and click Add. Let's scroll down a little more, add a few more tools here. Let's click OK now. And here's my new panel at the far right. All right, let's hide the User Commands panel. We just right-click anywhere on the ribbon, select Panels, and then unselect User Commands. And the User Commands panel disappears. Let's right-click on the ribbon again, select Customize User Commands. 
Let's remove the tools that we've placed on our custom user panel. Shift select them all and click remove and click OK. Removing all the tools from the user commands panel is another way to remove it from the ribbon. Let's right click on the ribbon again and select customize user commands. There's a little question mark icon at the bottom of this dialog window. Many dialog windows in Inventor will display this icon. This is a help icon. Click on it to launch Inventor's local help for the active window. And let's close this file. Notice here that we have import and export options. You can import and export user-defined panel settings from an XML file. This prevents you from losing your custom panel settings if you accidentally reset or need to reinstall the software. If you've spent quite a bit of time customizing your ribbon, it's a good idea to save your settings. This concludes our overview of the ribbon bar.